So, so today I'd like to have an in-depth discussion about some of the information we learned from the Behind the Sims Summit and what it might mean for the future of not just The Sims 4, but The Sims franchise in general. For The Sims 4, we were told that next year we were going to be getting two expansions and we were given the slightest, the tensiest of sneak peeks of these with concept art. So this is the concept art that we were showing. Well, this is some of them. Um, so we were getting a couple of new worlds. Uh, here we can see a kid on a bike. Um, there's a baby there on behind the mother on like one of those backpack things. You can see like a bunch of stools here. Um, so I'd be really interested to see what comes of these stools. Like it looks like a fruit and veggie stall. Um, no, <sighs> that big um, thing there in the background. Um, and then we were showing these. Um, so more build by. Uh, so we've got this rustic looking kitchen. Um, and the same like the bedroom that that looks interesting. Again, this is concept art. This is stuff that might not even be in the expansions when we get them. So it's hard to say. Uh, and then... Uh, and then here we got some ditches. Um, this set here. Um, these little drawers. It kind of looks like... It's like a sort of jewellery... Okay. There's a lot of like, jelly bracelets that you used to have, hair brush, or maybe the hair ties or something. Um, this little thing. That chair is great. But yes, yeah, so that was some of the concept art that we got. So looking at that concept art, it looks like one expansion will be a Generations type expansion, which is something people have been asking for for a while. I know I personally would like to focus on other life stages other than like young adult life which is a lot of what the sims 4 has been so far the dentures suggest something more for elders finally and a kid on a bike is really something that should have been in the game since bikes were introduced however that was with discover university and i know that those kind of animations are different for the different um age stages so maybe maybe they just had to wait a bit longer for that Honestly, I have been asking for an expansion on all the different life stages for so long. I'm always asking for stuff for toddlers and children and elders. I just... <sighs> it's going to be... I, I think that kind of pack is going to be really good. Generations was a great expansion for The Sims 3. It added so much. And though we already have a lot of the features in the game through packs like Parenthood, My Wedding Stories and High School Years, there's still a lot of life experiences in the different age groups that could be added and there would still be a lot to be added for a generation style expansion. The other big Sims 4 news was a baby update. They showed us a clip of a crawling baby. And this is something the community has been wanting for years, and it's going to be so fun to check it out when it arrives. So it said expecting 2023 and Sim Guru Frost did confirm on tw Twitter that it would be early 2023. Uh, so that's exciting. Uh, it also looks like it's going to be a new life stage, like between the bassinet babies and the toddlers. I guess maybe that leaves it open to add other life stages in, as well, such as preschools or tweens. I don't know. There's a few life stages missing still. Baby change is going to be a nice addition to a generations expansion style, um, which I think further proves that theory or just 
adds, helps add to that theory of the generation style EP. I also hope, and this is this is a lot to ask. <laughs> it's a lot to ask. But if it is a new life stage between the bassinet object baby and the toddler, please, can we get new <laughs> knitted onesies with the nifty knitting pack? Please. I know it's a long shot, but please send it. Please for me. More big news was at early, early early look at the next generation of The Sims. It's currently called Project Renee, which I've seen some people be confused about. It's a common thing in game development to call something a different uh, name as you're still developing the game, because there's always a chance of it becoming something else, and there's also the chance of it leaking, and you have to keep things pretty tightly wrapped. Sims 4 came from something called the Project Olympus, so it's not all that strange to have this currently called Project Renee. Now the customization of the Essex look incredible. I think it's very promising. I think it's clear that they've been listening to what the community wants. We want the color wheel back. We want to have a lot of customization with the build and buy stuff. At this point, it's hard to um, tell what this will actually look like at the end, but they've been working hard to develop a great game. I also quite like that they've decided to share this this early, um, and they said they'll be listening to the community as they develop it, uh, because doing that, working in collaboration like that, is a great way to make sure it's a game will enjoy, um, and I really look forward to seeing how it develops. My guess is we'll be waiting until at least 2025 for the game. As they said, they plan to share more over the next couple of years, and it would be a few years until we actually got the game. My hope is that they take the time to make a good game, because there is nothing worse than a rushed version that still has issues eight years later. There's also talk about cross-platform and multiplayer. The way they talked about multiplayer was it sounded like it would be an option that you could play with another friend, but you could also play solo, which I'm glad because that was a concern of mine if they ever did go in the multiplayer direction for The Sims, uh, that you could still have it solo. And my other concern is that if you are able to play solo without an internet connection. Uh, I know you'll likely have to have an interconnect, uh, internet connection to at least download the game, but it would be nice if once you have the game, you don't actually have to always be connected to the internet because that was one issue that they had with the last SimCity game uh, that caused... Well, it caused a lot of issues and it can be quite a strain on servers and stuff as well. Uh, and for a game like The Sims that's really, really popular, I think if you're not playing online or if you're not using what they'll have as like their gallery equivalent, you don't actually need to be online and you don't need to be using the servers and causing issues and wait times. I do think multiplayer could be fun. I know a lot of people would enjoy that. Uh, would like that so I'm glad it will be an option rather than something forced but still there you know as for the cross platform part of it I am a little worried about the use of a mobile phone in a game such as this uh, but it is also very early in the process so it's hard to say what it's going to look like at the end mobile games and technology have come so far and they will continue to go quite far. Mobile is really how the future goes. A lot of people don't have computers, they just use mobile and have, you know, that kind of thing. So it could work out really well. I just hope that they don't end up having to lower the quality of the game for the sake of having it on mobile as well, because I think that would make a lot of people unhappy. I would rather a well-polished, good quality game on a PC rather than have it available on anything, on everything you know, um, 
And there are still two mobile Sims games, which were even part of the Sims Summit, so it's not like they're hidden away or anything. So I hope the quality of the game is prioritised above having it as a mobile option as well. I've also noticed a lot of people talk about how Project Renee is copying Paralives, and well, I can see why people think that it doesn't really take into consideration how game development works. Project Renee has been in the works for years already. Any similarities now are because of similar technologies and the fact that it's the same genre. They're working on the same uh, basic game dev technology. I think it's unfair to both games to make this claim when we've barely seen anything about Project Renee. I'd love Paralives to do well because then that means the Sims will be encouraged to do better and likewise I would like the Sims to do well because that'll encourage Paralives to do better. It's that's just how innovation and competition works. I that's the competition is needed there to push it forward uh, and I think Judging them unfairly before they're even out is going to do more damage, really. I don't think that we can truly make these comparisons until we have both games to play and neither of them are going to be available anytime soon. The important thing here is support your game devs. I'm really looking forward to seeing how Project Renee develops seeing what the next Sims expansions are and watching everyone's 100 baby challenge become even more chaotic with the baby update. Please let me know your own thoughts about this uh, down below. Please be civil. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Dag dag!